Hey guys, uh, Mr. Barron's here again, bringing another math video. Uh, this one I am bringing you on the integral zero theorem. So the integral zero theorem is something I do in uh, in level two advanced or level three advanced math, and uh, it's one of those things that you kind of just need to know, and it's an important topic, and it's used for um, being able to factor and solve things like cubics and quartics and quintics. Um, that don't involve a whole lot of work and a whole lot of factoring. So this is an example here. Um, I've got, you can see that this is a quartic because it's to the power of 4. And uh, this doesn't factor by any simple means. So what we want to do in, in a situation like that is we want to use the integral zero theorem. Um, so we want to identify uh, the possible factors. So I'll write them out here. Possible factors of this guy. So the possible factors are, if we look at this last value, so this is the constant uh, of the polynomial, the possible factors of this, so the possible factors of 9. So they are, and I'll, uh, I'll just erase that because I want to put them right next to that. Let me see. So the possible factors of 9, so let's list them up. So 1 is obviously a factor. So 1, so plus or minus 1, and we have to do plus or minus factors. And then plus or minus 3 is a factor. 3 times 3 is 9. And then plus or minus 9 is a factor. So once we get these factors, these, are, these aren't necessarily uh, x-intercepts or solutions or things like that. We have to check and see which ones work. So actually what we have to do is we have to go p of 1, p of negative 1. And we'll figure out these values in just a second now. P of 3, P of negative 3, P of 9, and P of negative 9. So you can see, guys, if you had something that had a lot of factors in it, we'd be uh, in a world of hurt, right? So we're hoping that we can get at least, you know, one or two of these guys that actually work. So all you do is you take... Uh, your value for x here, so 1, and sub it back in. So I actually use my calculator, and as I'm talking here, I'm trying to st stuff this thing into my calculator. So I have a TI, and all my students have a TI 83 um, or 84, and they allow you to be able to graph or even plug in a function. So what my students do is they usually um, plug this into their y equals function in their TI. I wish I had a TI, virtual TI here that I could show you, but it's not working right now. Um, if I had a virtual t here, I would show you. But all they do is sub it into the y equals function, and then they can either take a look at the graph, or they can go to the table. Now, a lot of them prefer to go to the table, so I'm just going to bring up the table, and then I'm just going to check my values. It's very simple as that. So I don't have to go through the process of plugging all these numbers in. So, like, I know 1 is 32 from my table, negative 1 is 0, uh, negative 3 is 0, Positive 3 is 720. Uh, positive 9, I got to go down on my table a little bit, is a huge number. So it's 24,480. So obviously that's not a solution. And then negative 3, or negative, this is actually negative 9. Negative 9 is going to be a fairly large number, I would assume, as well. So 5,472. So you can see we get to uh, this guy right here is the solution. So negative 1, and then negative 3 is also a solution. So those are actually x-intercepts. So we can put those right on our graph right away. So those negative 1, and then also negative 3. So what we want to do now is to see if there's any other, and there has to be, of course, any other solutions. <coughs> Excuse me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, synthetically divide this guy. So I'm going to pick, doesn't matter which one of these I pick, I'm going to pick negative 1 first, just because, and then I'm going to synthetically divide. So all you do for synthetic division is you take the coefficients and write them out. So 2, 13, 23. Make sure if there's any missing, like if you're missing an x squared here, you plug a 0 in, 3, and then negative 9. And we know, because this works, we should get a 0 back here. If we didn't, we'd have made, if we don't, we made a mistake. So bring down my 2, Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2, and then I just add these together. So 13 plus negative 2 is 11 times these, so that's negative 11. 
and then I add so 23 plus negative 11 so that is um, 12 and then I get 12 times 3 let me just check it out. Hang on, let's see what's going on here. 23 minus 11, 12. So that's negative 1 times 12, sorry. And that's negative 12. And then that's going to be uh, 9. Negative 9, sorry. And then negative 1 times negative 9 is 9. And then we add these together as 0. So let me just recap that. I'll give you kind of a chop job of it. So I bring down my 2. <clears throat> negative 1 times 2, negative 2. Add 13 plus negative 2, 11. Negative, negative 1 times 11, negative 11. 23 plus negative 11 is 12. Then um, we add again, or multiply, so that gives negative 12. And add negative 9, multiply is positive 9. And we should get 0 here because we know that the remainder, that's the factor theorem, right? So if I plug in negative 1 into this, it's a factor. If I divide, I get 0. Same thing. All right, so now what we can do is we're left with a cubic, so we could actually factor that if we wanted to, if there was a means, or we can do rational roots theorem again, or integral zero theorem, sorry. Um, but we're not going to do that. We have another solution here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that negative 3, and I'm going to use synthetic division again, and I'm going to take what I got left from this guy. So it's just like dividing it again by another factor. And again, I'm hoping to get 0 here. So I bring down my 2, so negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. I'm going to add negative 11, subtract 6, is 5, or add negative 6. It's negative 15 when you multiply those two, and that gives me <clears throat> negative 3. Negative 3 times negative 3 is 9, and that's 0. So what I got left with here is a quadratic. So I have 2x squared plus 5x minus 3. And I want to be able to solve this for x to find my other two solutions. So I'm going to have to use quad form. So um, I'll do that. It's a quadratic formula. So negative 5. So actually I'll write it out. I won't assume that you know it. Let me just uh, let's get a little messy here, guys. Uh, eraser. So we get negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. All right, so now all you do is fill this guy in. So I'm going to have negative 5 plus or minus the square root of, so that's going to be 5 squared minus 4, and a is 2, c is negative 3, all over 2 times 2. So what I want to do now is go ahead and work out what's underneath the square root here. So 5 squared is 25 times, or subtract 4 times 2 times negative. So that's, that's going to be uh, negative, positive 24. Let me see now. So 5 squared plus 24. So 49 underneath my root sign. Plus or minus square root of 49. So square root of 49 is 7. All over 4. So now I got a couple of little addition problems. So negative 5. Subtract 7. Divided by 4 is negative 3. So I get negative 3 again. So that's already one of my factors. So that tells me that negative 3 here. And I got that plotted wrong. That should be over here, obviously. Um, that negative 3, which I plotted incorrectly. And you guys were probably screaming at the computer a little while ago. Um should be, of course, um, a double root. So here it is. So that guy right there is a double root. So that, that looks like it's going to be a single root. So let's see what happens now. So negative 5 plus 7 divided by 4. So that's going to be a half. So that's my other solution. So a half is going to go right here. So we have a couple of other things that we can use to be able to get an accurate sketch. So I know that Whatever my constant out here is, my negative 9, that's my y-intercept. Because if I let x equal 0, sorry. If I let x equal 0, this thing would reduce down to negative 9. So that's my y-intercept all the way down here. I also know, since this has a positive leading coefficient, 
and this is an even exponent, it's going to open up. So it's like a quadratic. It works the same way. So if you have a positive leading coefficient, it opens up. A negative it opens down. So that works with leading coefficient and an even exponent. So positive leading coefficient with an even exponent opens up. Negative leading coefficient with an uh, even exponent opens down. So that means that it, it, you know, my both of my arrows will end off pointing up. So it might look like this. So the only thing we don't know are max and mins. And for the purpose of this, we don't need to know that. And you all have graphing calculators, so if you want to plug that in and see what it looks like before you graph it, by all means, I would definitely recommend doing that. The only thing we have to keep in mind is this is a double root. Negative 3 there appears twice. So just for the sake of, you know, the completeness of my example, I'm going to write it what my x-intercepts are. So my x-intercepts are this x is equal to negative 3, negative 1, and 1 over 2. And I think that's all it is. It doesn't say anything about factor form there, no. So I'll write in factor form before I finish this example. So I know my graph starts up this way, so it has to come down, and it bounces off the curve here. So this is where I'm not going to know how high this goes up. So again, there's no, like, it's just a sketch. There's no way of knowing it without using some calculus or getting a little bit more complicated. So then I'll go down through here. So that goes to the negative 1. I'm going to go down through this. And so turn straight around and go back up through that. So a little harder to draw it on the computer, guys, but it looks something like that. So the only thing left that you might be, be uh, considering is factored form of this, of this guy right here. So I know my factors, or my x-intercept is negative 3, negative 1, and 1 half. So that means that this negative 3 has a factor of x plus 3. And since it's a double root, we write the squared on it like that. This negative 1 has a factor of x plus 1. And this 1 half has a factor of 2x minus 1. So you might be asking yourself, how do I know that's the factored form, or how do I know how to write the factor? So if I solve a factor... I had to get the x-intercept. So if I solve the little factor in the bracket equal to 0, I have to get back my x-intercept. So, <coughs> excuse me, you need to make sure that basically it's the opposite sign. So if my factor is negative 2 or negative 3, then it's going to be plus 3 in the brackets. Now this 2x minus 1, essentially what we have is is we need to be able to solve this guy. Now some people might think, well, why didn't I write it like that? Well, we don't do not write factors with fractions in them, okay? So we need to write them as um, in a different form. So you could start by writing it like this and then think about, well, if I multiply this by 2 to get rid of the get rid of the fraction, then that would be my factored form. All right, guys, I hope this helps you with uh, trying to figure out um, integral zero theorem um, and, and sketching a polynomial. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in class.